As a title for this talk, I think I'll use the title Russia, the Ukraine, and the Mafia. You know, when two mafia organizations go to the mattresses, as they say, that is, when they go to war against each other, a Christian, of course, must pray for all people on all sides of the conflict, and as far as possible, must care for the dying, the maimed, the sick, and the suffering of all sides. However, the Christian must not participate in their war. To participate in a mafia war would be directly contrary to the teaching of Jesus, his teaching to his apostles and to his disciples regarding doing the will of the Father, which Jesus teaches clearly in the Gospels in relation to the rejection of violence and of enmity. Such a refusal would be morally mandated even if all the participants are baptized Catholic mafia, mafia members and all are major benefactors of the church. A Christian cannot, simply cannot, go to war for one or the other of the mafia families or organizations that have gone to the mattresses. Russia and the Ukraine and the United States are micro-mafia organizations. They differ from a mafia organization only in their propaganda, only in their justifications of themselves. 1,600 years ago, St. Augustine pointed out to the entire Christian world in Book 4, Chapter 4 of his City of God, and I quote, It was an apt and true reply which was given to Alexander the Great by a pirate who he had seized. For when the, that king had asked the man what he meant by taking and keeping others' possessions at sea, he answered with a bold pride, the same as you mean, by seizing the whole earth. But because I do it with a petty ship, I am called a robber, while you do it with a great fleet and are styled an emperor. Augustine continues, Kingdoms without justice are similar to bands of robbers. And so, if justice is left out, what are kingdoms except great robber bands? For what are robber bands except little kingdoms? A band is also a group of men governed by the orders of a leader, bound by a social compact, and its booty is divided according to its laws. If it is it is a fact that desperate men continually come and increase the growth of the band so that now they are able to capture and hold territory and establish fixed seats, seize, cities, seize cities, and subdue people, then it more conspicuously assumes the name kingdom instead of robber band. And this name is now openly granted to it, not for any subtraction of its rapaciousness or its violence, but by the addition of impunity. So, Augustine describes a nation-state without justice, Sounds like Russia or the Ukraine and the United States today. 
in fact, for as long as each of them has, has existed. The inequality, for example, of wealth between the top 1% in both all those nations and the bottom 80% cannot be attributed to a nation that's just. Carl, Carl Fredericks uh, was the former Eton professor of government at Harvard University. He wrote a book called The Pathology of Power. And on the final page of that book, in, a fi in the final chapter of a book that was 400 pages, this is what he wrote. Our analysis of government has, I hope, shown that politics needs all these dubious practices. Politics cannot be managed without violence, deceit, betrayal, corruption, and propaganda. Now that sounds like a mafia value system and a mafia operation to me. But a hundred years before Fredericks, Leo, Leo Tolstoy, speaking of the, of the nation state, put it this way. Quote, in spite of the unceasing efforts made by men in power to conceal this and ascribe a different meaning to political power, it is the application of a rope or a chain by which a person will be bound and dragged or whipped, with which he will be flogged, or of a knife or an axe by which they will cut off his hands, his feet, his ears, and his head. Or the threat they will do this. And thus it was in the time of Nero and Genghis Khan. And thus it is now today, even in the most liberal of governments. Close quote. Again, this sounds like a mafia value system and a mafia operation to me, even though Tolstoy is talking about government states. So let's think of something here a bit. The word mafia, like the words nation and state, is a sociological term. It's a sociological category, a sociological abstraction. It, like the state or nation, possesses no center of personality from which to think or to act or to choose. Wars, whether mafia wars or nation state wars, are not caused or started by the mafia or the state, but only by human beings because only human beings can act, think, and choose. The mafia, the state, is an intellectual abstraction. It cannot kill people, abuse people, maim people. And so it is in every act of war, each and every act of war, the mafia or the state kills and maims nobody. Only the individual human being, acting alone or in concert with other human beings, causes the death and the suffering in war. To say the Mafia did this, or Germany did that, is to replace the concrete with the abstract. Back at the beginning of the 20th century, the Russian philosopher Nikolai Berdyaev wrote, 
The greatest sin of our age is replacing the concrete with the abstract. To say the mafia did this or Germany did that is to replace the con concrete reality of John killing Jim or Jane maiming Joan with abstraction. The mafia or Germany which intrinsically has no ability to act, think, choose, feel, taste, smell, hear, or touch. A concrete living human being kills and a concrete living human being dies. A concrete living human being maims and a concrete living human being is maimed. Not the abstract word mafia or Germany. The abstract word can neither kill nor die. Now, this is not to say that words in themselves as abstractions cannot motivate and encourage human beings to act one way or another. They most certainly can. But it is always and everywhere only the individual human being who acts, for example, that kills or maims another human being in war. Germany doesn't do it. The mafia doesn't do it. If a person thinks that giving his or her life over to a, a mini or uber mafia organization or killing for or dying for a small time, a big time mafia operation is the way for him or her to live and to die. So be it. And he have. This is his or her personal choice. His or her thoughts, words, deeds, desires, values, goals will be, of course, the thoughts, words, deeds, desires, values, and goals which are fostered and rewarded by the micro-mafia or macro-mafia institution to which he or she has turned over mind, will, body, conscience, and perhaps the destiny of his or her immortal soul. However, to be a faithful to be faithful to a macro or micro mafia organization, the individual Christian must renounce his or her fidelity to Jesus, to God incarnate, and to his way of nonviolent love of friends and enemies as he proclaims it in the gospel. Why? Because contradictory demands placed upon a person, both of which must be met at the same time, dictates by the very structure of human existence that only one can be chosen and the other must be rejected. Where there are two masters in the moment, to choose one is to renounce the other. No amount of esoteric, theological, moral doublethink can alter this either or fact of human existence, which Jesus himself well knew, since he places the story, the words of you cannot serve two masters at the very heart of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 24. You know, 66% of the human beings in Russia are Christian. 71% of the human beings in the Ukraine are Christian. 70% of the human beings in the United States are Christian. 
99% of the human beings in the mafia are Christian. Which mafia organization is engaged in a just war is an absurd and fanciful question. The leaders of mafia organizations have no concern whatsoever whether their violence is justified or unjustified, and their membership has even less concern. What could be an eternal life or eternal death question for Christians in the face of war in these mafia organizations, like the state, is which master are the overwhelming majority of Christians in Russia, Ukraine, the United States, and the more in the mafia committed to following when the moral issue of the moment that cannot be avoided is how to respond to the violence in the imminency of war. Will any, most, all, none of the Christians in Russia, the Ukraine, the United States, the Mafia, serve Putin, serve Zelensky, serve Biden, serve the Godfather, or serve Jesus? This is Emmanuel Charles McCarthy.